Hey, what's up? Scott Balkum here. And today, well, we're working with Kessler Crane and we're doing a complete tutorial on this little beauty. That's right, the new Kessler Crane Second Shooter Pro. Let's dive in and get you started. So let's take a look at the Second Shooter Pro itself. On the front, we have a bunch of buttons. We'll get to those in just a moment. We have an LCD screen to view all of your setup and configuration information. Flip this little bad boy up to the top. You have a flashlight. Yeah, a flashlight. It, it's a flashlight, so yeah. Uh, we also have a remote trigger in and out. The out goes to your camera. It is for remote shutter. And then the in is if you wanted to set up, say, a wildlife trigger, or if you had a remote switch that you wanted to start your move remotely, you can do that with that as well. We also have three RJ45 jacks. Uh, these are for the motors, and they use standard Cat5, Cat6 cables. You can buy it in an electronic store. And then a Wi-Fi antenna, good for over 200 feet of wireless goodness. Yeah. Then on the bottom, we have a locking Limo power. Yeah, nice, I know, uh, exactly. Then we also have the standard barrel power with a clip to lock the cable in. We have a micro USB, that is for connecting this to a computer to run their chaos software or for firmware updates. And then we have two expansion ports. Now make sure that you buy the linking cable directly through KesslerCrane.com. It is not a standard cable, so you wanna make sure you get the correct one. Um, on the back are two magnets, so you can just stick it to metal or any other magnets that you wish, give that back. And uh, yeah, that right there in a nutshell is the Kessler Crane Second Shooter Pro controller. Now let's dive in and start setting it up. So let's hook up your Second Shooter Pro controller. The first thing you need, well, you need some motors from Kessler Crane. Here is a pan and tilt module. Over here, we have a pan and tilt module on a slider. Here is the slider motor right here. Uh, they're very easy to hook up. You have the three RJ45 jacks right here. So all you need to do is connect up a Cat5, Cat6 cable. This is connected to the tilt module. So we'll plug it in right here to tilt. And then we have another cable right here that's connected to the pan and we'll plug that in right here. It's basically ready to go. We just need one more important little thing. That's right, power. Power is super useful. So we take the barrel or the locking limo, plug it in the bottom. You see it turns on and it's ready to go. Pretty easy, right? So let's say you wanted to connect this up to a second controller. Let's say you have a Second Shooter Plus, or maybe you bought two Second Shooter Pros because you're that cool. Well, you just need the standard Kessler linking cable. You plug one into one controller, you plug the other end into the other controller, and then it is linked. Now, all you need to do is go in and make sure you set it to master and slave, and we'll get into that in just a moment. And yeah, you're good, you're good to go. So when you first power it up, you'll notice the firmware version. Make sure you're running the latest and greatest firmware. Always go to KesslerCrane.com to find the latest one and we'll go through a firmware update later. Then once it comes up, it will come down to the first menu options here, which we have standalone, master slave, Wi-Fi, and motor options. Now standalone is when you're gonna run this controller by itself. That means you're not running it with a second controller. If you're running it with a second controller, you will need to go into the master slave configuration. And the way you do that is just arrow down, press master slave, you'll configure one of your controllers as master and the other one as slave. You'll do this on each of your controllers. So this one you'll select master and on this controller you would go down and select slave. Just press enter and confirm those options. Next down here, we have Wi-Fi settings. Just press enter on that. You can turn it on or off just by pressing enter. That will disable it, enter it, turn it on. Move down here, you have your channel information. If you want to change it to a different channel, that's no problem at all. Press enter, and then when you escape, which is menu, it is going to restart your controller. Uh, it needs to do that to enable the radio. Now it's gonna come back up. And now we now have, down here, we have motor options as well. Let's click on that and you will see we have access enable and disable. So if you press enter on that, you will see that you can disable or enable any of these access that you have. 
we have a slider here. We can press enter on it and you can see that the slider is now disabled. Now, why might you do that? Well, let's say you have a scene and you don't wanna pan. Uh, you don't wanna accidentally pan, it's perfectly locked on. So you might go down and disable the pan motor and that way you can't accidentally do it. It's not something you'd use every day, but there is that option should you need it. Also, you'll have the other three axes if you are linked here and you can do that through here. So then we have fast mode. Now fast mode is quite simply, it doesn't make the motors go faster. It enables the fastest acceleration to whatever the max speed is that you've configured. So you can enable or disable it simply by pressing enter. Then we have quiet mode. Now what quiet mode is, is a limit on the max speed of the motor. So if we enable it, you can see you can set your RPM here. So why would you want quiet mode? Well, these motors are very quiet under normal operating conditions. However, when you're setting up a move, you can make these motors go very fast with turbo mode. And sometimes that noise level can get a little higher than what some people might consider okay for your environment. What if you're in a concert hall or you're on set with a very emotional character and you don't wanna take them out of character, but you need to move to the next uh, keyframe or you need to set up with the next move. Well, you can enable quiet mode, set your RPMs to like a thousand or 1500 and the motors will never be allowed to go faster and thus operate at the quietest levels possible. It's not something you always need, but it's there should you need it. So let's dive in and program our first move. And you might be asking, Scott, how do we do that? Well, let's look at the main screen there's an option that says program move. It doesn't say first move, it just says moves, but we'll just do enter for that. Now it's giving you a option here of two or three keyframes. Let's start with two and go from there. So when we press enter, it says set your first keyframe. That looks pretty good right there, but what you're basically doing at this point is moving your axis so that it lines up with your first keyframe. So you have slide here, as you can go left or right. You have pan left or right, and you have tilt up and down. Quick little tip here, if you hold the shift key, it will go at turbo speed. That's right, super fast. Uh, that looks like a pretty good spot right there. Let's choose enter to set our first keyframe. Then we need to move to our second keyframe. So let's take our slider all the way down to there, but we're gonna just change our pan over here. Let's turbo speed that, that looks good. Uh, let's go down because we wanna follow this imaginary butterfly floating across the screen and then he lands right here. Let's press enter to confirm our second keyframe. Now we've got a move programmed in. Next question is, how do we wanna perform this move? So we are offered with options of loop scrub, run once, time lapse, and stop motion. Let's go to loop scrub first. Press enter, and you will see here that we have a time of 12 seconds, we have a ramp of 25%, and then we have the run option. So the time here is how long do you want this move to take? So moving from keyframe one to keyframe two is going to take 12 seconds right here. Let's press enter, let's change that to 16 seconds. Now ramp is the acceleration from stop to full speed. It is how long of a time that's gonna take. So anything around 25 to 50% is really nice and smooth. So we'll just take 25%. All we need to do now is go to run. Now, when I click run, what's gonna happen is this is going to run back over here to its first keyframe and it's going to start. Now we are in loop scrub mode, so that means that it is going to loop. Let's try it. Press enter, it says wait, it's running over here to its first keyframe and now it's ready to go. It's going to loop now, it's gonna run all the way down to the end, which means I have to talk for a full 15 seconds. That's not really hard for me, if any of you know me, you know I could talk for well over 15 seconds. But in this case, I just needed it to end now. Now it's going to turn around and go backwards. And at this point, I could talk backwards, but I don't know how. So I will just talk normally, and you can see it's gonna run backwards. It's gonna to continue to do this over and over again. Let's press enter, that will stop it. Now we're in scrub mode. Now scrub mode is neat because if we take the slide and we go back and forth, you notice we are cruising at full speed. 
Yeah, baby. We are cruising, but it's performing the move in full speed. If we hold down the shift button, it will run in normal speed. So we can actually slide this move in normal, the speed that we have configured. Again, fast and then shift for slow. That's scrubbing, it's super easy. Now let's say that that wasn't fast enough. So to exit out of this, we just need to press menu. And now we're back to the loop scrub speed. That wasn't fast enough. I couldn't talk that long. Let's go down to 12 seconds and press enter. Now we can run it again. And now it will zoom along at a 12 second shot. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I didn't talk once. Well, I guess technically I did now. All right, let's stop that and let's escape out and we'll hit menu to escape again. So now let's jump down to run once. Simply go down, press enter, and we see our move time is still 12 seconds. We have a ramp of 25%. We can go down here and just click run and it will go to one and then immediately start. And it's only going to run it one time from start to finish. It's not going to come back. It's going to end here in three, two, one. It's done. Magic. I can count to 12, so it's, it's not really magic. But now if you look on the screen, you'll see it says reset. Now, we are given the option to click reset. We press it. It goes back to one and then it holds. It's not going to start. We see on the screen it says run. We press enter, it will now start. So we reset it, and now it just waits for us to press run. As soon as we press run, it starts again. Again, it's only going to run one time, and it's pretty magical. Next, we're jumping down into time-lapse mode. So we click on that, and now we're faced with two questions. Do we want to run in shoot, move, shoot, or continuous? Let's go to shoot, move, shoot first, and I'll explain what it is. So shoot, move, shoot is pretty simple. It will take a photo, it will then move, and then it will take the next photo. It will then move again and repeat until it's completed. Now, if you see on the screen, we have exposure, delay, photos, and runtime. Now, Exposure, you need to set it on your camera unless it's in bulb mode. If it's in bulb mode, then the second shooter will control the exposure. But if you just set one second on your camera for the exposure, you need to tell the controller that it's set to one second. Now, it is best to set it for what it's set at or just a little bit longer just for safety. So you can set it to one or two seconds. We'll set it to one second. On here, we have it configured for half a second, so that works out nice. Delay is the time between each photo. So make sure that the delay is in there and it's long enough that it can actually get to its next move. So remember, it's going to ramp up in speed. So in the middle, it's going to be making larger jumps. So you wanna make sure your delay is high enough that it can move there. Otherwise, what's going to happen is it is going to delay that shutter and it may not be on the exact right time. So make sure you have enough built in. Uh, two seconds is pretty good for normal moves, but you can have it whatever you'd like. Just make sure you keep that in mind. Another thing for you to consider in your delay is giving your camera enough time to settle down uh, after its move so that you'll have the cleanest, clearest shots. So just program a little extra time in there for that purpose. So the number of photos is quite simple. How many photos do you wanna take? But you need to keep in mind when you're playing your time-lapse back on your timeline. So on a 24 frame per second timeline, if you have 48 photos selected, that means you're gonna run for two seconds. But a quick little key here is if you press the shift key, you'll see it says clip length two seconds. So if I change this to, well, let's change it down to 24 seconds all the way down to 24. If you hold down the button, it will go down there and accelerate as well. We're at 23, let's go 24. Now you see the runtime down here is one minute and 10 seconds. That includes your exposure and your delay. 
But if I hold shift, you'll see it says your clip length is one second. That means playback time will be one second on a 24 frame per second timeline. That's pretty easy. So if you wanna adjust your, uh, your run time here, and you may want this to run over a longer period of time, then you either need to change your delay, you need to change your exposure, or you need to change the number of photos. It's up to you. So we're good with 24 photos. We're gonna go down. Runtime is not a configurable option. It's just merely letting you know what the results of these three settings are. We press enter here, and we get to our next option, which is ramp. So ramp is quite simply the same ramp as before. It's, it's how much it's going to ramp up in speed to get to its maximum speed of the move and then ramp back down. Anything between 25 and 50% is great. If you click down to advanced features, so we're greeted with these options here. Start delay is quite simply how long before it starts its move. So you could do zero seconds, which means it'll start the move immediately when you press enter, or you could put in five second delay. Or let's say it's now four o'clock in the afternoon and you'd like to catch that sunset a couple hours from now. Program in a couple of hours, press start, and it will wait for two hours and then start its move and its time lapse. Pretty handy for later. We're not gonna do a delay at this point. Pre-photos is if you would like it to take photos before it starts its move. So let's say you want to capture uh, one second of 24 frames per second of the move, but you also want to capture one second before and one second after, but not moving. You would choose 24 pre-photos and 24 post-photos. Uh, it's super easy. It's just the before and after, how many photos you want it to take before it actually starts the move, and then when it's completed, how many photos afterwards. We are going to do zero on both of those, and we're gonna go down to done, and we are ready to go. So it's at position one. If we press enter, you're gonna hear it click, and it's gonna start going. So here we go. It just took its first photo, and it moved. Took a photo, see it move. Taking a photo, see it move. Taking a photo, see it move. You notice it's just kind of doing its thing. Yep. That's all it needs to do. If you press enter, it will pause and then you can press enter to resume. If you'd like to stop, press menu and it will back out. So let's do a continuous next. Let's arrow down, choose continuous, press enter. We see we have exposure, delay, and photos just like before, and those combined equal the runtime. Now, what makes continuous continuous? Well, the move will run continuously without stopping to take the photo. So what is that good for? Well, that's good for adding motion blur into your time lapse. Uh, quite simply, we love motion blur when we're using our cinema cameras, so why not put motion blur in your move? We push down the shift key and you can see the clip length at 24 frames per second would be one second. We're good to go, let's press enter. It goes to the next option, which is we have our ramp, which is between 25 and 50%, just like before. We have our advanced features. Again, we have a start delay. We have our pre and post photos, just like on the shoot, move, shoot. We don't want any this time, so let's press done. It's ready to go, let's press start. It's going to frame number one, and it's going. So now it's moving. You can barely see it at first because it is ramping, but it's, it's not stopping. It's continuously moving as it's taking our 24 frames. So it's going, it's building up its speed, and that's about max speed because we have a one minute and 10 second runtime. So that is continuous. To stop it again, press enter. And then to exit out, press menu. So let's try a stop motion next. Let's go down to stop motion. And you can see we have number of photos. We have ramp. We have auto advance. So what we have here, the number of photos clearly is the number of photos it's going to take for that move. We have it at 48 right now. Ramp again, 25 to 50, what, whatever you like is fine. Auto advance versus manual advance. Auto advance means it will take the photo when you press the button. It will then move to the next frame and then it'll be ready for you to take the next photo. If you have it on manual advance, it will take the photo 
and then it will wait for you to ask it to move. So if you need to retake it, it's easy that way. We're gonna set it up on auto. We're gonna go to next and you can see it is ready to go right here at number one. So now we're ready to go, but we need to animate something because we're doing stop motion. How about this amazing pin? Let's animate it. We'll put it down here. It says we're ready to snap. We'll press enter. It just took a photo. Now we need to move. It already moved. Press enter to snap again. It moved, I move. It moved, I move. It moved, I move. You can see how much fun these stop motion animators have. I mean, this is a blast. Yep, and you can see up here at the top, it shows you that you're on frame seven of 48. Perfect for keeping track. To exit out, merely press menu and then press menu again. So let's talk about modifying your moves. Let's say, you remember that little butterfly that was flying over here? Um, he didn't land, he flew off. So we need to modify that. So let's hit menu, go back. And if you go back to program move, you can see we have edit move, new move and skip. Skip would be if you just wanna go back and rerun uh, what you have, but you could choose edit move. And then it says there's two keyframes here. So you can arrow to the keyframe you want. So keyframe one, which is this one, uh, that was fine. The butterfly was flying just fine here. So we're gonna set that one as fine. But keyframe two, we need to change. So it's gonna go over here. And we thought that butterfly had landed, but it didn't, it flew up. So all we need to do is adjust a kind of like, really flew off. Hey, if any of y'all know how to train a butterfly, just, just let me know. So when we're done here, press enter. And now that is done, press escape. And we're back to our uh, mode to run. So we'll just do a loop scrub. Uh, we'll go down here to run. And you see, it goes back to keyframe one and away it goes. This time, finally getting that butterfly as it flies off into a distant sunset or a light bulb. Uh oh. So then we will exit out and back up and we are good there. Now, let's say you need to do a new move. So go back to program move and choose new move. Now, this time, let's do three keyframes. Press enter, set your first keyframe. We're gonna do it right there. We're going to slide over, let's slide this way. And we'll just arrow, take it down just a little bit. We'll set that as number two. And then the third one, we're gonna want right here in the middle for some silly reason. And we'll pan this off this way. I'm just basically showing you that it can do three keyframes. And then it says the second keyframe time. That's at 50%. What that means is where do you want it to be? So if it's 50%, it will start 50%, three. So it's equal distance. So you can move that, that, that second keyframe either way. We'll just keep it in the middle and we'll go down to done. So now we just need to choose our operating mode, loop scrub, choose down here. We'll just make this go really fast. Eight seconds is cool. And we'll click run and it will zoom off to its keyframe one and run. There it goes. There's number one, number two, and number three. And it's looping backwards now, but we don't care about that. Let's go back. So as you can see, it's very easy to set up controlled moves using the Second Shooter Pro. But what if we want to do something a little more manual? So from the main menu, we go down here to Manual Move, now we have a set of different options. We have the speed. Now this speed here is what is the maximum speed the motors will go. So you're gonna to wanna to program this for the speed that you want to move it as you're going. So you might do this if you just wanna manually control a slide uh, electronically and you don't wanna just program a move, but you may not want a 50% move going here. Um, but for now, we'll set it to 50%. Ramp again, same thing as before. We're just gonna configure this down here to 25%. 
because I like 25%. And since I'm driving, you have to do what I say. Press enter. Now we have set calibration limits. So what is set calibration limits? Well, it's to set hard stops that the motors won't go any further. Uh, it's to protect the motors, protect you, and keep oopsies from happening. So to set them, we just press enter on it, and it says mark begin. So what you wanna do here is set the extents of where these motors can go. So we'll pan it over here, we'll slide it all the way to the end, and then we will tilt it all the way to there. Press enter to mark the beginning, and then we're going to slide it all the way down to the end, and then we will pan over all the way to the other side. And then we will tilt it all the way up and to there. So now we press enter and mark the end. So now when I press start, we're in manual move mode and it's running, it says it's running, but it's not doing anything because I'm not telling it to do anything. So I can slide it left or right, but if, if I hold it down, it goes right up to the end and it stops. That's your protection there. The same thing with your tilt. If I go down, if I go up, it will stop when it hits its mode. Pretty simple. Again, you can put it in sport mode there, which by holding down the shift key and it will zoom all the way to the end, but it stopped at the end preventing damage, which is pretty nice. Now, here's a quick tip. If you hold down slide and you press enter, it goes into what's called cruise control, which means I got to let go of the button. So start your slide, press enter, cruise control, and it goes to the end. That's kind of handy. So if we press menu and go back up to our speed, we can set this down. Let's set it down to say 10%. Perfect. Press enter, go down to start. And we still have our calibration limits there, so we will start the slide, press enter, cruise control. Now I can go back to my interview. So tell me about your life, Scott. When did you start filming butterflies with time lapse? Yeah, that is cruise control, and that is a quick tip. To stop, press enter. To escape out, press menu, press menu again. So our next option is turntable mode. Go down here, press enter, and you can see we're faced with one choice. That is speed. It's very easy. What is turntable mode, you might ask? Well, you use the pan axis and you put a turntable or a platter on top of there and you could take a beautiful product like the Second Shooter Pro, place it on your turntable and it will rotate in one direction or the other forever and ever and ever. Uh, it's very easy to do. All you do is Press the pan, one direction, and it's going. If you would like to slow it down, just drop the arrow down, and you can see it's slowed down. You can speed it up. It's going faster. To stop it, you may press the button again. If you wanna change directions, go the other way. It's that easy. Very simple, very fun. There's not much more fun than turntables. Bet you didn't know you could turntable like that, did you? Yeah. So now let's talk about settings. If we arrow down to settings, well, you get the operating mode. Now, what is operating mode? Well, quite simply, it's just like when it starts up at the beginning. You have standalone and master and slave. So let's do a master and slave. Well, let's do that with this controller right here. We will take this and plug it in here. We will take our power and plug it in here. We will take our tilt and we will plug it in to the tilt. We will take our pan and we will plug it into pan and I'm gonna throw you a curveball. This is a fizz motor. And it's basically for focus, for iris, or for zoom. And you would mount it on the front and control your lens. So we're just gonna put this on the table and we're gonna plug it in right here. Now, 
on the controller, we need to set this one down here by going to settings, operating mode, we want to set to master slave. We're going to set this to slave one. And we're going to go over here to settings. We're going to go operating mode and we're going to set this to master. And now these are linked. So now we can just go into program move, set up a two keyframe move, it says set the first keyframe. So we will go down with the tilt. We will pan over. And uh, we'll slide just a little bit that way right there. And now we want to do our next controller. So to do that, double click shift. Now it says slave active. So now I'm controlling these three. So the slide, I have this fizz motor plugged into it. So you see, it's moving. So we're gonna set that one to right there. The pan is pan, and we have the tilt right there. So now we're going to press enter. There's our first keyframe. We're still in slave mode, so let's just drop this up. And by drop this up, I mean move it up. And then we're going to change the slide there. And then we're going to, let's pan the other way. Perfect. We're going to double click the shift key. We're in master mode. So now we're going to slide on over. Beautiful. To there and tilt down. Now press enter again. We're going to loop scrub. We're going to run that over eight seconds and run. It's going to go to one. If you notice everything is now running. That's ready to go. Here we go. The sliding, that's panning, that's tilting, it's tilting. This is also now doing its thing. We have six axis running off of two controllers linked from that one right there. And it's looping back and forth. Kind of cool, huh? Press enter to stop. So let's continue in settings. If you go down to control options, press enter, you'll see we have the ability to swap the axis. So if you have your slider opposite direction from you and you are going left and you mean to go right, well, you can merely select your axis and press enter and it will swap the direction on it. So now left is right and right is left. Yeah, you can do that. And if you have it linked to another controller, you can go down to the second set of axes here. Press menu to escape back and we're back at control options. Now, firmware update. Firmware update is it's actually a very simple process. The way you're gonna do it is you're gonna take a micro USB cable. You're gonna plug it into the micro USB port on the bottom here. You're gonna plug that into your computer. You are going to select firmware update and it's going to say, do not power down firmware ready to update. On your computer, it's going to show up as a USB device. Take the file that you got from Kessler Crane only. Don't ever use anything else and you're going to drag the file into that new USB device. And it's gonna copy it over, it's gonna tell you it's doing it, and it's gonna restart, and you have updated your firmware. It's fairly easy. So the last one down here is lash compensation. Now what lash compensation is, is in a belt-driven motor configuration, there's a slight amount of slack that is built in to the system between the pulleys and the belt. And that's done for the smoothest possible operation. But that little bit of slack in there can cause, when you, when you move your gear, it has to wait to grab a hold of that belt to move forward. So what lash compensation does is it is a built-in configuration to let it know how much of that slack exists. And so it will pre-take up that tension so that you actually have a very smooth move. Now, it's, it's good to note that if you bought your controller and your motors at the same time from Kessler, they will program that in for, for you and it will be set at zero. But it's a very easy thing to do and we'll do a video at a later time on that. Press menu to back out and we're good. So the great folks over there at Kessler Crane have decided to put a cheat sheet right on the back for you and for me. But on the back here, we have a few cool cheat sheet options. We've covered some of them, but others we have not. So you know you can swap the axis in the settings, but did you know you can also swap the axis 
while you're in any operating mode. Take your slide left and right, let's say it's backwards, push both buttons and hold it down for a few seconds. And then on the screen it says, oh, by the way, your left and right have now been swapped. Press enter and now it's reversed. Neat. Let's swap it back, press them down again for a few seconds, and it's swapped back. Now the next cheat sheet is if you happen to be running in time-lapse mode and you would like to toggle your LCD screen on or off for the backlight, just hit the shift key. This only works in time-lapse modes, not continuous modes, but it'll turn on your light. So the next one on the cheat sheet is a flashlight. Yep, I told you it had one on here. All you have to do is press shift and enter, and there you go. You got a flashlight right on the top. And there's a bunch of others here on the bottom, but we did go through a lot of those here on this tutorial. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So as you can tell, it's very easy to configure simple and complex moves using the Kessler Crane Second Shooter Pro. And the good folks over at Kessler Crane want to make sure that everything works for you. If you ever have any problems, go out to KesslerCrane.com, click on the support tab, and there's a frequently asked questions out there. You can submit a trouble ticket if you have any issues, or you could contact them via email or phone if you need support that way. During business hours, they will get back to you fairly quickly and very responsively. These people love helping you, and they love that you use their products and make such amazing stuff, and they just want to help. They're great people over there at Kessler Crane. So on behalf of myself and the good folks at Kessler Crane, we want to thank you for purchasing your Second Shooter Pro and have a fantastic time creating some beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm.